Um, I haven't done almost anything um, with my UK people for obvious reasons, but Kathy's video is on point. Um, so go look for that and that will definitely help. Um, okay, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be with you guys on a Thursday night. Um, I missed team calls more than I missed anything else. Um, so what I want to share with you guys is sort of my story, and you guys know a lot of it, um, but like on a more personal level, because while your hardships might not be mine, they might not be similar to mine, I, I really hope you can draw some parallels between me and my business struggles this year um, because I hit top 10 and then I kind of like, I, I lost my balance for a while and my business took a nosedive um, when uh, my dad and my sister got sick in January and then I gained some equilibrium again and sort of got several false starts this year, right? I'm back and then I'm not back and then I'm back and then I'm not back. Um, and so while reasons might be different for you or for a team member that you have right now, I think a lot of the feelings are going to be similar. Um, for example, shame because you stop and start and stop and start and you intend to do something. You say you're going to do something and then you don't. So whether or not you've ever gone through this kind of thing, um, I think it's valuable for every single one of us so that, um, you know, if I hadn't been a top 10 coach, um, if I hadn't been a coach who's established a business for four years, maybe I would have found it a lot harder to come back. And maybe I wouldn't have right? As an Emerald coach or newer coach, maybe I wouldn't have um, without the right support. So the reason I want to share with you guys is so that you've got sort of this information in your back pocket for yourself in the future, heaven forbid, um, or for one of your coaches. Um, so I don't want to get super emotional. I've done so much of that um, this year. Um, but one of the big things that I've struggled with this year is a real like loss of confidence. Um, because like I said, those false starts that I, that I got this year. Um, and I kept saying that I was going to do something and then I didn't because, you know, somebody else would get sick or have surgery or, you know, a bombshell of bad news. Um, and so I didn't. And then I started to like, I would restart my fitness journey all the time. Um, I kept doing that this year and I kept posting about that till eventually I hit the point. I'm like, I can't say that again. Like, I can't say that anymore. I can't say I'm starting again. Um, and there was like, and the, the loss of confidence was just super real. Um, both because I'm a fitness coach. Um, right. And I, I got fat. That's what happened. Um, Medically speaking, from my doctor's mouth, you are over fat. <laughs> and like, it's not derogatory, it's just true. That's what happens, right? Um, so there was the guilt and there was the shame and there was this like, holy crap, what do I even say now after I keep saying I'm going to start and I haven't because um, life happened in a, in a big fat way. Um, so I'll talk about the fitness aspect of it. And I'll talk about the confidence, um, aspect of it because I had like the, the sky sort of part. I got this huge aha moment. Um, this week I did a zoom call with one of my older brothers who runs this super successful multimillion dollar business. And, and he wanted to help me get started again. Um, so we sat down and we made, we, we, came up with a business strategy just for one month because that's really all I felt I could handle. And I was talking to him and just saying like, I know for people who, who lose someone they love, it's really, com it's really common to feel this loss of confidence. Even on this Zoom call, I'm having, I'm struggling guys. Because ah. I feel like I'm sorry, oh my gosh. Of course I did. <laughs> 
I'm not practiced anymore. And it's okay with me. It's not, you know, it's not a pride thing. It's just, um, I want to give you guys something that, that is valuable for you because I haven't done that this year, you know? So <laughs> I just, um, I was talking to my brother about that loss of confidence and that like, you know, I look at the, the huge to-do list of things that I used to do last year and I cannot do it right now. Um, I just can't. And, um, I, I told him, I don't know how I'm going to muster up the confidence to, to do this again and to go live on my page even feel scary again to me, um, to sponsor coaches, um, to have new challengers join my challenge group. All of this stuff feels scary to me again. And, um, he said, he said, do you know what? There's this huge myth, um, and like to give you an idea of how sec how successful he is, he wouldn't ever need to earn another dollar in his life to pay for his life and two generations forward. Like, like extremely successful. I've always so looked up to him and assumed that he just had this natural crazy amount of confidence. And he said, you know what? There's this real misconception that CEOs of really successful businesses have confidence and they feel confident doing what they do. And he's like, I fake my way through a lot. And there's a huge difference between bravery and confidence. He said, all you need is bravery. You don't need the confidence. That's going to come and that's going to continue to grow as you do things, but you don't need to feel confident. And I've said this to how many coaches I forgot. You know, I totally forgot. Um, and I talk about, you know, I used to talk a lot about building your confidence. Um, and what I realize is for new coaches and for coaches who are struggling and for coaches who are restarting, they don't need to feel confident. I do not feel confident right now, but I can muster up some bravery. I can muster up a little bit of bravery, you know, um, to do, to do those things that I've, I've chosen to do for this month. And it's going to build on and I know um, that I'm going to be able to do more next month and the following month and the following month. Does that make sense? Like it's so much less about confidence than it is about, you know, that, what is that quote? It's like, all you need is five seconds of insane courage. And I have had to muster that up for myself. Um, this is my first week really being back at work. Um, and I've had to muster that up for myself uh, multiple times a day, every day. And, and I'm, I'm loving my job. I'm loving being back. I really am. Um, but it's, it, it is still really scary for me. Um, so I feel like my confidence is just going to continue to grow as long as I can just keep on mustering those five seconds of courage. Um, when I decide I'm going to do something, um, in terms of like my fitness journey and how that's gone this year, um, it's like, like I said, there was just this shame I felt being a, being a coach, having been a coach for almost five years. Um, and it's not so much that I gained weight. It's that I kept saying I was going to start over. I kept saying, this is it now. Now this is it. Now this is it. I believed it every single time. I wasn't faking it. I, I believed it. I thought now I'm going to be able to. And then another month later, now I'm going to be able to. And I clearly didn't do it, right? So very obviously didn't do it until um, July when I, when I started making some progress again at end of July, beginning of February, something. J July and then August is next. <laughs> uh, beginning of August is when I actually started um, to make some progress. And I think, honestly, that although it hurt my pride, I think it's the best thing that I could have done is to share where I was because all those people that stuck with me as I got those false starts in my fitness journey, 
they're seeing that I am actually doing it now. Um, I posted a transformation photo from phase one of my 80 day obsession test group and I did get results. Um, I actually had lost 13 pounds uh, during phase one, but then of course it was shark week, right? Way in day. So then gained three pounds back. Um, but that's okay. It's gone again. Um, so I am now making progress and everybody that stuck with me through that journey and the stopping and the starting, Melissa Zimmerman posted something about that yesterday. She, it was a great post. I actually shared it. I almost never do that, but I shared it on my profile today and she did such an amazing post about like, she knows what that feels like. And, and now looking back on it, I think every woman knows what that feels like to start something and be excited and you know, they're going to make progress. Every person, not just every woman knows what that feels like. And then you fail and then you go again and then you fail and then you go again and then you fail. And this time I'm not failing. This time I'm implementing and I'm actually doing it. So I still think that while um, it was difficult um, for me to continue sharing and then not doing what I said I was gonna do, it, it just was my reality and um, I can't change that. I still think it's the best thing that I could have done to continue sharing that journey. And now I, I am actually ready and something's different this time. I mean, it's the 80 day test group for me, which like, I, I really want to stress this for you guys. It's a challenge group for me. It, it's accountability for me. So while being a coach didn't do anything, anything to help me in my fitness journey, it didn't for some reason. I've always been a self-starter. I've always been the person who I'll do it by myself, you know? Um, but I, I, I couldn't, I needed support. This is the first time in my fitness journey ever that I have felt I needed that support and I needed that accountability for myself. If I could change anything, I would have messaged Allie when I started gaining weight and said, can you be my coach, please? I wish I would have done that. Like, because I know that that accountability and that support and that having somebody who's looking at your results and having somebody, oh my gosh, the power of before and after pictures, what kept me on track is that I knew after four weeks I would be submitting before and after pictures. That is what kept me on track. That's what I'm doing in my next fitness challenge, mandatory before pictures, because they do not lie, right? Um, so like, I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have reached out and asked somebody, can you help me? Because I can't do it by myself right now. Um, and that's something that I'm going to be talking about a lot on my fitness page um, because I attract a lot of women who are self-starters and who typically are very self-motivated and who don't really like to ask for help necessarily. And I'll be talking about that. It's been a really tough year. It's been a really hard time in my life and it was so important, so crucial for me to have support and have somebody who was keeping me accountable. Um, the 80 day test group actually started a week before my sister died. Um, and then I was in Ontario for two weeks. So I didn't follow the meal plan for those two weeks. Um, and, uh, my family ate together pretty much the only time we felt like we could eat was when we were all together. So, um, the food wasn't healthy, uh, but I was in the 80 day accountability group. So I didn't overeat and I didn't use it as a crutch and I didn't drink like crazy, you know, um, because I was in that group and I had that accountability and regardless of the hell that was going on, um, I still had that support and it kept me on track to the degree that I was able to stay on track during that time. Um, so if you are struggling in your fitness journey and if you feel like you're just not doing what you need to do, um, actually my girl Steph just joined my, my fitness challenge, um, Stephanie Larson. So she's a coach and she just, she 
she did exactly that. She just reached out and said, I need accountability. I need to be a challenger again. Can I be a part of your challenge group? Um, or like ask, you can ask her upline. Um, but I think, I think we don't reach out for help enough. Right. Um, so that's a huge thing. If you see a coach struggling and life stuff is happening and they're, you know, kind of starting and stopping their fitness journey, invite them to be a part of your challenge group again and be really serious about helping them get results. Make sure they take those before photos for you, right? Make sure that they're taking those photos in a bikini or like if it's a guy shirtless or something like that, because then it just made it just made it real for me. When I had to take those before photos, it made it real for me. I have reverse body dysmorphia where it doesn't matter that my doctor's telling me I'm over fat. I look in the mirror and I'm like, I look good. Um, I, <laughs> I just do. Um, so it, so like it was total reality check for me. I looked at the photos and I'm like, I do not look good. Like I don't look good in these photos. And there are these back rolls that I have never in my life had. I've never had these back rolls and they just sort of sit there. <laughs> so, <laughs> too. so it was like awesome reality check um, for me. So um, I'll get a little bit, I'll, I'll get more into like what I'm actually doing, mom rolls, uh, what I'm actually doing for work and how I'm restarting my business. Um, I believe more so now than I ever have before that our own fitness journey is the entire foundation of our business. That's the entire foundation. I'm not saying that you need to necessarily be somebody who follows the portion fix necessarily. It works great for a lot of people. Uh, Danielle Natoni eats paleo and that works really well for her, um, right? But your own fitness journey and being super dedicated to that is really the foundation for everything else. We've got a lot of opportunities with like to get little transformations even after you're at your ideal weight when you go on vacation for example and you come home and you've got a food baby um or over the holidays and stuff we've got a lot of opportunities to get those little transformations um but i see it now more than i've ever seen it before um and now that i am actually being consistent and that i'm dedicated when it comes to my fitness journey and on my page i'm really just sharing my feelings about my own fitness journey that's most of what i'm doing and my inbox is like i've had I've had probably five conversations about challenge group from new people um, between yesterday and today. And I'm five for five for people joining my next challenge group and like with a challenge pack. I'm five for five because they are looking at my posts and they're seeing themselves in it. So I'm not posting and saying, here's what you should do and here's what you should do and here's what you should do like I used to. I'm saying, here's how I'm feeling. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what's working for me. A lot of here's how I'm feeling. And so they're seeing themselves in it and they're messaging me because of those posts. My call to action post for my challenge group totally bombed, but it was all those other posts that I was posting that made people like, that made people like light bulb. You know, she's doing it even though she struggles with whatever, the same as I do right? Um, I can't remember what I started talking about before that, but I was on a train of thought. It's like utterly gone now. So I think I'll just move on. I don't know. Um, okay. So business stuff, that's where I was, that's where I was going to, yes, Stephanie, five for five, um, meaning five out of five conversations have joined my next challenge group. I have still a ton of messages to answer in my inbox, um, so I'm sure I won't be batting a thousand, um, but that tells me I'm doing something right, right, when it comes to um, my social media, because a lot of the objections are gone. They just want somebody who gets them 
you know, to help them. Um, so that's number one. My own fitness journey is priority one. Um, I'm never again going to like not do my workout or, you know, answer texts or messages during my workout. I know some of you do that. Um, because I always used to do that. Like I'd answer a Facebook message, reply, like comment on a post or something like that. Um, while I'm doing my workout because, because I know that I need to be living it. People can feel it if you're being genuine. They can just feel it. Um, and I came back to when I started planning what I was going to do for September, what my goals are. I came back to the North Star. Um, one thing, Here's where I'm starting. I'm not, I'm not sponsoring coaches this month. I'm, I'm not ready um, to take on everything I used to do. Um, I, number one, I got a hold of my own fitness journey and that's, it's happening now. Number two, I just want to help people. So I went back to all my previous clients and I said, hey, I am here. Whether or not you purchase anything for my next fitness challenge. Um, I want you to join if you want to join. If you've got goals, you're in. Um, because I feel like I need to practice being a coach again, right? And all the all my previous clients have programs, right? So whether or not they purchase Shakeology or Energize or whatever else, a lot of them are, um, but a lot of them aren't as well. That's cool. I need to practice being a coach again and helping people get results. Um, my objective in my 12 week challenge group, yes, 12 weeks is to work myself out of a job. I want to, I want them to get to the point that they can get beyond this 12 week challenge group and not need me anymore. If you still want me, cool. I mean, awesome. Um, that's great, but I want to work myself out of, out of a job. I, I want to really, truly help them get to a point where um, they've built a lifestyle that they can move forward with. And hello, all the new coaches, right? People who really believe and people who have had that transformation and people who have that fire in their belly to help other people. But that's not even my objective. My objective isn't to do this challenge group so I get coaches, right? It's not so I can get people. It's so that I can help them. I want to help them do exactly what I'm doing, and that's it. I know that great coaches are going to come out of it, um, but that's not the objective. I just want to help as many people as possible. Uh, Chrissy, would you recommend new coaches doing this? Um, not sure what you mean. If you could typey type clarify, that would be awesome. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what you mean on that. Um, and then what I did was I wrote out my outcomes. What I want to do is help my previous clients. I want to have super lots of fun doing my job again, like lots of fun. Um, have a few new fitness uh, challengers join me. And um, just start to get into a routine, get back into the swing of things. So I, I set up my objectives and then I set up, what am I going to need to do? Like, what am I going to need to do each, like focus on each week this month? And I did the simplest of simple, like it doesn't get more simple than this. Um, task list for my business at the top in black pen is everything I need to do for my challenge groups. In the middle, in blue pen, is everything I need to do for like administrative stuff. At the bottom in red pen is everything I need to do for the team. And I, I, every, like I made one page for every day of the week and I just go through and I check my stuff off. Um, challenge group post challenge group responses, <laughs> like it's the simple stuff. Um, and it, it also builds my confidence to put all of these things down on a list. Sometimes I do a thing and then write it down so that I can check the box after um, because it builds my confidence to be doing this stuff and to actually be making progress on it. Um, 
And thus far this week, I have checked off every box and I have been, I have been connected with my current challengers. Um, I've been answering my messages in my inbox every single day. Those simple, simple, basic things. Um, and what I would love for anybody who feels they need to restart or when you see that somebody needs to restart, um, as a coach for me, it was really easy to say, you should do this and this and this and this. These are the things you should do without asking any questions, without saying, how are you feeling, you know, since whatever, you know, uh, whatever the reason is that somebody needs a restart. How are you feeling? What do you want to do? What are, what are your outcomes? Do you want to make this something you just love doing for now? Um, more as a, as a hobby kind of thing, or are you really pumped and excited to like blow up your business? Um, what do you want to do? I wish that I wish that I had been more empathetic and asked more questions as a coach um, and actually worked through the steps and the to do's with my coaches. I just didn't understand that that was needed. Typically, when I would have a conversation with a coach about what needed to be done, um, it was just a very straightforward, like these 10 things, you know? And for me, I was like, this is so simple, right? But for somebody particularly who's struggling, um, it's more than that. I feel like more than that is needed because that's what my brother who is not a coach did for me. And then it allowed me to sort of clear the fog, right? how I was feeling, what I wanted to accomplish. And it wasn't a long conversation. It just allowed me to clear the fog and to see my way from sort of, I, I, I feel like I was kind of in a haze, you know? Um, and I couldn't even find my way from where I was to where I wanted to be. So I talked about how I was feeling and then I talked about what I wanted. What do I want, right? And then, I got to start talking about the steps and what I needed to do, set a goal and then make my week's worth of to do's and I'll do it again next week and I'll do it again the following week and I will do it exactly like this. I'll make it just super simple. Um, Chrissy, um, I should have clarified that I have a gazillion, uh, previous clients, uh, 2000 and, uh, more, I'm not sure exactly, but I know my spreadsheet was more than 2000 and that wasn't including like my leads from Beachbody. That was including just my clients who have ordered from my website. So I should have clarified that I had all of these previous clients who had bought a challenge pack or made like Shakeology purchase or something like that. Um, so I think that's a little bit different than just running free challenge groups. We do that. We do free groups and that's what I would recommend doing. If you want to do something different than the free groups that you've done in the past, um, I know I'll actually share the post with you guys in the, in Fit Republic. Um, but one of my friends who is an elite coach, um, she buys a box of packets of Shakeology and then she does these like little mini challenge groups. So she'll send out, um, I think five of them or something like that per person. And then she'll have them buy them. So, but it's like such a small investment. Um, so yeah, it's like clean week. It's just, you get more, uh, PV, like you get more PV if you buy the packets than you do commissions if that makes sense. Um, so anyway, if you want to do something different, you could do something like clean week, whether they're ordering the packets from beach buddy or you're ordering a box and they're paying you. Um, so that's something that you could do. Um, but I wouldn't do like a 30 day, fr just free challenge group for new people. Um, because they're, then you're offering them all the value and accountability of 30 days. Um, and it's not a business building thing. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, okay. So that's it. That's all I got. When it comes, I'll recap real quick for you. When it comes to confidence and the lack of confidence that a lot of coaches feel, including me, um, restarting 
it, we don't need it, right? We don't need to feel confident. All we need is a little bit of bravery. And that's, that's really all we need. And the confidence comes as a side dish. Um, secondly, our fitness journey is everything, everything, everything. It's the foundation of our entire business. For somebody who is struggling, for somebody who's restarting, some accountability, it, like accountability and somebody who's going to walk alongside them is everything. Um, and like ask for help, you know, reach out and ask somebody for help if you're struggling and you need that. Um, and then lastly, just keep it so simple. Like keep it so simple when you start. Run a challenge group. Start with that, right? Like coaches who are restarting probably know how to do that. So start with that and then get into everything else. Build on that as you go. That's all I got for today. Please don't leave because I have to take a screenshot of our people on the call so that I can do a prize draw. And I know I was a little bit all over the place today, guys. Um, I was nervous, more nervous than I even thought <laughs> I would be. Um, but also so happy to see your faces. Oh my gosh. Like I miss this Thursday night more than I can even tell you guys. Um, so, ah, uh, thanks Ashley. Okay. So I will post the prize draw in just a couple minutes in the fit Republic. You guys have a great night. Love you.